All right, this is Mike from BU Fitness, and what he's going to talk about is his facility here and really what's going on. I'm Dr. Tony. I'm the uh, host of the Crooked Spine Show. And Mike, let's get started for one, too. When did you, when you started this two years ago, what were you doing beforehand? What was your experience? Were you in fitness um, or what was going yes, on? Yes, I was still in fitness. Okay. I was uh, actually a director of personal training for Commercial Gym. Wow, okay. And after a while of doing that, I kind of uh, saw a need <clears throat> that you really can't really get really personal in doing commercial facilities. Got it. So I wanted to have more, uh, uh, I would say, a, a more of a tighter relationship with my clients. Got it. Okay. Versus sales and stuff like that. How long did you do that for at the, at the uh, commercial level? Uh, at the commercial level, I started actually uh, right out of high school. Good for you. Yes. All so I right. uh, started in Pasadena okay. and I started for Family Fitness. And then okay. I went to Bally's and after that I got out for a while and then I went into doing studio recording. And then before that too, were you in sports before? What do you, how did you get into uh, sports? Yes, I, uh, I played track. Okay. I, I did track in high school and I played football. Okay. So I started uh, playing football at the age of 12. Wow, young. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I love sports. So that's one of the reasons why I got into training as well. I wanted to uh, attack it from the, uh, or approach it from the athletic end. That's there are a lot of athletes that have talent but they need that structure in order to go to the next level. And as you probably saw at the commercial level too, a lot of people that are trainers sometimes are great athletes, but sometimes they're not great trainers. Yes. What was the difference there? What would you, what you <clears throat> see? Uh, it's easier to train yourself okay. than just to apply the knowledge and the experience to another person. Yeah, because okay. then they're built differently, different body structure, different metabolism, and some people don't have the same motor skills you do. Because yeah. If you've been trained to be an athlete, it's a lot easier. Good, and with that too, when you got into your own facility here, how did you transfer over from being, uh, if you want to call it a manager of the commercial facility, to your own business? How was that transformation? Uh, the transformation was easy, actually, right? Kind it's of, easy. Yeah, it was easy okay. because I already had in my heart that I just wanted to help people. And that's exactly. the thing. If you don't have the passion into in training, then it's not going to be for you. If you're looking at it from a money aspect, then you're going to hit the door because it's going to be ups and downs. Well, it's going to struggle, right? Yes. So, yeah, so the passion is what held me on even through the hard times. So now this is uh, what I call the gravy time. So it's pouring in and having a passion for people to see people come in with a need and to actually sit with them and find out what they need. And then I show them what I offer and we see how we can make that need. Detail that for us too. How do you usually, I guess, bring somebody in or, or what's, your, what's your process? Okay, so if I have someone that comes in that's trying to lose weight, uh, what I do is I find out and see what their lifestyle habits are first. Okay. Because I can tell them about exercise all day, but yeah. I have to find out what their lifestyle is, and that way I can see where the hot points are that I need to touch on to get them to train, change in their mind first. Because if they don't change in their mind, it's not going to become a habit with them, and they're not going to have the drive and determination to see it through. So you find out their emotional connection to wherever they are from a weight loss perspective, and if there's one to interpret that for one too, and kind of build that bridge with them where you are, where you want to get them. Yes, okay. exactly. And when they do that, what's your program like for someone that wants to do just weight loss or in that, in that mindset? So what I do, I don't do dieting. Okay. I just sit and uh, I find out uh, what their weight is, their age is, and see where their uh, metabolic rate is at that particular point. And then I have a registered dietitian that I work with That's and she awesome. formulates a nice meal plan for them that caters directly to what their specific need is. Wow, so actually that's incorporated in your overall yes. plan and, and it comes here. with the training programs. What are those last usually 90 days, 60 days, 30 yes, days? 60 days, 90 days, cool. yes. Good, good, good. 90 days is probably one of the longest and then uh, I revisit with the dietitian with their current stats and then we re-evaluate uh, everything and give them a different plan from there. In that situation too, how do you incorporate weightlifting or exercise with that person? Uh, what I start out with is usually I start out with suspension. I start okay. out with body weight. Okay. That way I can uh, get their body acclimated to working out. Some of these people that come in here have never worked out a day in their life. Okay. So they're coming from jobs where they're sitting. Mm -hmm. So a lot of their muscles are dormant. So you have to wake up the muscles first. It's kind of like, uh, I give the analogy a lot with my clients, it's like baking a cake, a cake. You never put the cake in the oven. You turn the oven on, you let it get to the set temperature, then you put the cake in. You have to kind of do the same thing with training. You have to formulate the person's body to get to a certain level, then you can start adding heavier resistance, uh, cable work, then you can move on to strength training. It, it's a little bit better structure for me. And also cardio, how does cardio go into a type of muscle? So uh, what I do is I, uh, I base cardio, I have them warm up, of course, with some cardio. 
and I started a new system where I have them do three exercises, okay. and then I have them go to the spin bike to do cardio for about two minutes, and then they go to three more exercises, come back to the spin bike for two minutes. Yes. So it's kind of it's like this, so it's interval. Great. And that seemed to work best, and uh, even some of them that have a problem with the spin bike, I have them go to the treadmill and I just put a slight incline or have them walk at about 3.5 to 4 miles an hour and that just gets the heart rate low raised a little bit. Like you said before, it depends on where they are too. Yes, they can handle some, they have yes. before, they have disability. Yes. Too. You mentioned, you talked about earlier too, working with someone that is post-surgery, say post-knee or post-hip, mm -hmm. or how does that work with your clients? What do you, how do you work with them? A lot of time what I do is I tell them when they come out of like physical therapy, Yes. I have them to bring me the regimen of what the physical therapist was giving them okay. and I kind of base off the activity and exercises based off of what they have and I ask them also how long they went through the post recovery and from there I go usually start with the resistance okay. and I start to balance off of that and I increase resistance because I have bands that go up to like 160 pounds wow. so I can keep them on resistance for a while and then when they start feeling better and they say you know what I feel great then I'll move up to like five, seven pounds and I can see how they move from there and just evaluate them. We talked about earlier too, when you're getting them, and let's just start that situation, um, how do you get the mindset to realize, hey, you're not injured anymore, let's get things moving, let's get your body healthy? That one can be a tricky one sometimes. <laughs> so what I do is when they initially come in, you have to build the trust. Yes. Once you gain their trust, they will start to believe in what you say versus on what they think. Once you build that, because then you're the expert. Exactly. You're supposed to be the expert. Yeah. So instead of just trying to dump knowledge on them, I build a relationship first. And I lay everything down in layman terms. I try not to speak above their yeah. understanding and let them understand where I'm coming from in order for them to connect with me. And once they connect, then I, they can, they'll do everything in the gym that I ask them to do. You gotta build that trust first, yes. they'll do whatever you want to say, they have respect them too. Yes. You have to have that even respect first, I think. Yes. At that point, once they do, okay, he's here to help me, he's here to make sure I get better, boom, what do you yes. want me to do? Yes, exactly. And once you break that mind state, which is you have to get the mind renewed, yes. in order for them to move past that point, once that clicks in, they'll start to move. And sometimes they hit a couple of bumps because you know you have to, when you walk out those doors, you do it live. And sometimes yeah. life will throw you back a couple of steps. So then when they come in, it's like a re-renewing again. And then they go out and it's, it's, a, it's a relationship. Exactly. And me said life is, they may have a death and that may have to go out of town for a month or so. Yes. They come back, okay, where was I? How do I get back there quickly? Boom, ready to go. Yes. Okay. And also if someone comes in and works out, what's the, what's the addictive, I guess, time frame? What do you see as someone where they go, okay, I started care, I started treatment here and I'm getting exercise and done. With the physical therapy, when do you see a transition from okay, I'm rehabbing, I'm done with that, how do I stay healthy? Do okay. they transition to that point? Yes, um, you're talking about like far as uh, time frame? Yes. Uh, as soon as they come out of physical therapy and they come, usually it's anywhere between a two week period to a month. Okay. Because usually physical therapists really pound and push hard. Exactly. So when they come to me, it's almost like uh, two levels down because okay. therapists okay. really push hard. So when they come to me, it's like, okay, oh, he's going down a little bit, so the trust level builds up even higher. So then from there, I can push them in a different way to make them push a little bit harder so the results and the recovery happens even faster. Fantastic. Yes. And I think a lot of that too is once you get that trust and that value in there, getting a certain level, okay, now you're doing well, recover from your injury, now what do you want to do? Yes. Well, how, when does that usually occur? Usually uh, in that two week to a yes. month window, usually about two months, people are now starting to get in the thought process. I feel better, I'm not going through the therapy anymore, so now I want to sustain this. The next step. And then I get the change. next step where they come. And I say, now you want to, so you don't, because if they hurt their knee, I say, now we're going to teach you how you won't have to go through a second operation on the other that's knee. The plan. So that's the plan. So by telling them, hey, well, you have to stop sitting so much, so cut out TV. I, I tell them, if you're watching TV in the middle of uh, commercials, yes. do exercise, do body squats. Something. Yes, yeah, something. Get your body moving. If you're sitting for a while at work, get up, walk around, go get some water, go do something. Because you become dormant the more you sit and then uh, you start to have problems because sitting, that's what uh, I'm hearing from a lot of people. Sedentary things. stress. They, yes. they, they, they coined it per se as sedentary stress. Yes. When you don't move enough, your joints want to stiffen up, yes. your muscles weaken, everything becomes this mm -hmm. versus up and down. That's the overall plan. Yes. And I think a lot of it is 
when you have problems with people that their job all day is sitting. Yes. They're, they're driving to work every day, and they're sitting driving to work for an hour, driving home, sitting at work all day at a computer, they're hunched over all day too. Yes, that's really how do you counter that stress with what you do? That's the key. Yes. Like at, at home and doing the body squats, how do you get them to come in here? You, I guess you mentioned on the website, open at 4.30 in the morning, yes. close at 9. That's a long, long day. Yes. But they give people enough time, I think, yes. in their work, they, maybe they travel to come here, work out, go to work, or after work, come here afterwards. Yes. Do you recommend that, or how does that work? I recommend both, and the reason why... Uh, so both morning and night? Yes. Wow. So what I do is, uh, this is going to... <laughs> I have uh, what I call an unorthodox way of training my clients. Okay. I, I'm here all day, yes. so some of them have set times they come in, and then some have jobs where it's sporadic, so they say, well, I don't know if I can come this time. So I'm here all day, so there's no excuse. Wow. Okay, you have no their right. full accountability, basically. Yes, right. You I'm here. No choice. So when you walk in that door, then we'll... See start. where you are. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yes. So, so like, it gives them no ability not to come in for a second. Yes. Well, and with that too, I think it makes them go, okay, geez, I've, I've had a bad day, I've had a rough day, yes. I'm tired, but I'm still going to come in. Yes. Because I know Mike's waiting for me. Yes. Mike's going to call me and harass me if I don't come in. And that yes. a junior high peer pressure sometimes allows them to get the overall results, right? I mean, that's yes. the plan. I'm not here to harass them, but what's the overall plan with someone like that? Get them healthy. You go, okay, it was worth it. Yes. Now what do I do? I maintain this so I stay strong. I count the tolerance to the stress I deal with every day. My body doesn't work sometimes I need a surgery or have to have more medications. Yes. Have to do things like that. The dietitian you deal with too, how do they get people to not get on medication per se, but how do they get them to transfer from medications to more natural supplements? What do you think? How does uh, that work? It's, it's a mind thing again. Yes. So usually what I do is I find uh, what the natural substitute is for what they're taking. Got and it. I just give them a recommendation and say, hey, well, why don't you try this and see how this works for you? Um, a lot of it is uh, mainly stress, high blood pressure. Huge. I tell them just blood pressure alone, if you come in and work out, it, you'll get the stress off your body, you'll start to see your pressure start to go down. I had one client and she was uh, really high blood pressure. Yes. And she did tell me that she stopped taking her medicine when she started working out. She was doing, I guess, a, a test on herself to okay. see if the workout was going to help her. She stopped for about two weeks and then she had to go back in for an additional checkup with her doctor. To have the passion because I want to create a culture for people to come in and not look at the clients as a, a money bank, yeah. but to look at how am I going to transform my client from A to B and create them to have a, a lifestyle, not to just change and say, okay, and then start going back to the old eating habits to create a lifestyle and to do it for the community. I work with the community a lot. What do you do in the community? Uh, the, the community had a program called CX3, okay. which was to get uh, some of the restaurants that were locally here in the area to carry healthy items on the food, on the menu. That way, uh, people like myself that like to work out, we'd have a choice what we can eat there. And we could still you know, benefit and support your business as well. So we're just trying to create that atmosphere here and uh, we just started a walk Oh, which nice. we, uh, we're going to walk once a month, and we're trying to do uh, a billion steps this year. Good for you. Yes. For you. Had did the program work with the restaurants? Did they buy into that yet? Or a few did, okay. but a few were like, you know, they're like, you know, I'm trying to get by, and adding these things is going to more cost is a high risk business yes. per se. Right. So how do you make someone go? Okay, I'm going to change my menu for the time ended and the food cost and yes. see if someone does come in? Yes. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Right. But what, like, like you said too, once it buys in and that culture changes, yes. you have to get healthy. Yes. I mean, there's Kaiser down the street here for one too, and they'll tell you straight up, people are coming in in the drove because they're not healthy. Mm -hmm. And their cost as their own pocket is huge from a health insurance perspective. If they can come in here and work out with you and we're just go, Mike, tell me what to do, their cost goes, their medical doctor goes way down. Yes. That cost can come in here so they can actually get healthy get off medications, not have the surgeries, and overall feel a better quality of life, right? Yes. It all comes down to it. Yes. And when you, and, and your overall purpose here too, and you said growing to a bigger facility, when you incorporate other people in your business, how do you transition into that? Do you have people come to the community that already are already, tra already training with you now, or what, do you, what is your expectation? I would do a little of both. I would do uh, find some young people that would like to intern to learn the process. Huge. I'm, I'm in shadow. Huge. And that way you create a, uh, someone who wants to do something, uh, like a trainer, to see someone that does it, 
to actually shadow and see what it what partakes. That way, they have an idea and say, "Is this really for you, or is it not?" Because yeah. then you can see what you know. Because a lot of people they glamorize, it, especially like on Instagram. Of course, uh, training and the life is not like that all the time. Oh, no, you're here. Yeah. You said four thirty to nine, right? Yes. Yeah. So you get up. What time do you get get up to get here? Uh, get up. Uh, I live not too far, so I get yeah. up maybe about three thirty. Okay. Okay. So um, with that being said, when I leave here in the night, that little window of sleep I have, whatever I do, I have to do it within an hour. That's it. And then I have to be in bed because I need to get some sleep. That's it. And, and yes. having interns to seeing that non-glorious side of the yes. building facility and everything they're doing with people yes. gets them, like you said, buy in. And when they're in high school, I have interns in my office. Mm -hmm. They're basically, if you want to call them free labor, you don't have to pay for health insurance, I have to pay them sometimes nothing at all. But get them in here mm -hmm. so they see the event. And by yes. you being, I think, a teacher, it gets, for at least for me, uh, a revival of what I'm doing with my patient. It gets me yes. to walk through with them what they're doing. Yes. If you can walk through what my training facility, what my purpose is, transform, transform someone that's overweight and needs to get healthier, recover from an injury, needs to get healthier, just wants to get healthier overall. Yes. Just huge. Huge. Well, good yes. for you. Yes. Anything else to add, Mike? Anything I, yes. you want me to talk about that I didn't mention? Uh, let's see. It's not right. that good, Mike. Just starting out here. Yes, okay. I know you'll be doing really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a great interview. Um, I don't know. It's just, uh, just giving people the knowledge of eating and not dieting. That's, that's, that's the true. biggest thing. People need to eat food because what happens, like a lot of these supplement companies coming up now, want people to drink shakes. Yes. And the bad thing about it, you will lose weight. I can put you on a green juice diet every day and you're going to lose weight. But when you go back to eating solid but food, I can't afford that anymore, huh? you're going to have problems. Yes. And that's, that's, the, that's the disnomen that they're starting to give people and it gives them a false sense of achievement. Because they'll lose weight, but then what do you tell them when they go back? Then they feel that they have to take these supplements to stay where they are, and that's, they just stay in the rotation. That cycle, of, yes, of taking the supplements, and they think the supplements is doing everything. When if you just eat and you just do your portions, you'll be fine. What well, you mentioned too earlier is planning with the dietitian or yourself, planning yes. your meals out, yes, four or five days in advance, so you have enough food ready to go. Not going to talk about carbs because you're hungry. Yes, you're tired of something in the fridge. Yes, that's huge. That's huge. Yes. Well, good. Thanks. Water. A lot of time we think that we're hungry is actually a dehydration. What's a good amount of water for someone to drink? Would you say if someone to 200 pounds? A male. A uh, male. Uh, they say you should drink an ounce per body. Okay. Yes. Okay. And how many times I, I've heard too from what I've read and seen? How many times you urinate in one day? Wow. I know it depends. If you drink uh, filter water, you drink alkaline water. Alkaline water makes you go more. Okay, guys. Flushes through the system. Because it absorbs into the body faster too. You don't realize that if you're drinking water but you're not going to the bathroom, yes. where's the water going? And you're not sweating it out too, you're not working out. Yeah. What are you doing? Are you drinking enough? Right. Sometimes exactly. you're not because you're eating salty foods. Foods. Because that would yes. dehydrate you or drink sugars too. That would dehydrate you. Yes, also. it would also will. It's huge. And sugar's bad for muscle. It's huge. Why, why is it bad for muscle? Uh, it eats muscle. Huge. It's drinking amazing. alcohol, people who go in their weakened rebels is bad for them because it uh, softens the muscle. Huge. Yes. Huge. Well, Mike, anything else? No, that's it. That's it. Well, thanks, Mike, for the interview, yes. and we'll talk to you soon. I appreciate it. Thank cool. you so much. Good deal. Thank you, sir.